of fear. Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> now that the old hag has bored you with her sissy scream scoopings, it's time for a real terror tale. So crypt into Tales from the Crypt crumbs, and your host and howls, the Crypt Keeper, will cuddle your blood and shiver your spine with another chiller diller from my moody collection. <laughs> I call this eerie adventure into the nauseating. Dig that cat, he's real gone. Ulrich the Undying bowed stiffly to the cheering crowd and stepped gingerly into the satin lined casket that rested suspended over the yawning 10 foot deep pit. A hush fell over the gathering of the carriers that had come to witness Ulrich's latest skirmish with death. A voice echoed over a loudspeaker. Ladies and gentlemen, Ulrich the Undying is getting into the coffin now. In a moment, its lid will be sealed and it will be lowered into the grave. Ulrich reclined in the coffin. The lid was closed and the coffin was lowered into the yawning excavation. The voice coming over the PA system rasps on describing the action for those who could not see. The grave diggers are stepping forward, folks. They're shoveling the earth back into the grave, covering the coffin. Lying in the darkness, among the satin folds that surrounded him, Ulrich the Undying laughed as he listened to the voice far above him and the booming sound of the earth striking the coffin lid. Experts calculate that a man sealed in that coffin would suffocate within an hour, folks. Ulrich will remain buried for three hours. <laughs> and when they dig me up, they will examine me and pronounce me dead. But I will live again, return from the dead again, as I've returned from the dead before. And this, this will be my farewell performance. This will be the last time I will return. It is the last time I can return. Ah, I remember how it all began. How he stood over me as I lay drunk in a doorway on a skid row, a derelict. A down and outer. What is your name? No, none of your business. How he bent close to me, whispering. How would you like to be rich? Richer than you'd ever dreamed. Go on, scram. Let me be. Let me. How he fed me coffee until he sobered me up. Then told me his wild story. My name is Dr. Emil Manfred. I am ready to astound the world with my discovery. The discovery that will make us both rich. What's it all about, Doc? I have discovered how to cheat death, my friend. How to die and then to live again. Not just once, but many times. Die and live again? Uh, I, I, I don't get it. You heard of the superstition regarding the common alley cat? The superstition that a cat has nine lives? Well, I have discovered the cat's secret, my friend. What? You mean? Yes. I can give you the multiple lives of a cat. I know how. Think what that could mean. Good Lord. With a cat's ability to return from the dead time and again, you could defy death, become famous, give exhibitions that wouldn't make us rich. How oh, dark? How can he do it? It is a simple matter, my friend. An operation. Removing a certain gland from a common cat and placing it in your body. Are you willing? I, I don't know. I remember how I finally consented to the operation. I remember lying in Dr. Manfred's Me. laboratory upon a white table, watching the cat we'd capture squirm beside. Are you ready? Ready, Doc. I remember the sickening smell of the ether, the cat's sh shrill scream as I slipped into oblivion, and then waking. How do you feel? All right, I, I guess. Uh, was it successful? I remember how Dr. Manfred nodded at the stiff, silent form of the cat on the operating table beside me. The operation was a success, my friend. You now have the multiple lives of that poor cat. Oh, how can I be sure? How Dr. Manfred lifted the gun, pointed it at my chest. A shot from this close range. It's a certain death, my friend. No, wait, no! I remember the explosion, the searing pain as the bullet entered my chest, tore into my heart. 
I remember the blackness closing in around me and then lifting. Welcome back to life, Yurik. Yurik? Yurik, the undying. That's what we will call you. You were killed by that bullet, Yurik. But now you have returned to start another life. Then one of the lies was used up. Exactly, but we will waste no more. From now on, we will make each of your lives pay, and pay well! You're like the Undying? I like it! When do we start? I remember the first spectacle I'd announced that I would go over Niagara Falls without a barrel and live. I remember the rushing Niagara River sweeping past the crowds that lined the shore, sweeping me to the brink and over. Right he goes! It'll kill him for sure! The fool! I remember the months I spent recovering waiting for the bones to mend. Listen to this, Doc! Yuri defies certain death, swims over falls, and lives. Earns $30,000 in wages and admissions. What they don't know, Ulrich, is that you did die. This is another life you are living. Your third. You have used two. I remember my second spectacle. I announced that I would leap from a plane flying at 2,000 feet without a parachute and live. I remember stepping into the space over the field where the crowds had gathered. Crazy idiot. This time he's gone too far. More months waiting for broken bones to knit torn flesh to heal. How much did we make this time, Doc? All told, $56,000. Here's your share, 28 grand. I'd taken a slug in my chest, I'd gone over Niagara Falls, and I leaped from a plane for a total of 86 grand. I used up three of my nine lives. I'd suffer the fear and the pain, but the doc who only watched took half the dough, so I made up my mind. All right, slow down, you're driving too fast. I'm going to make an investment, doc. I'm going to invest my fourth life for 100% of our partnership. I'll still have five lives left. Stop! Wait, stop! I remember this doc's face as I drove the car off the cliff. The horror upon it, and then as we hit, the sudden smile that spread across it. Doc died instantly. I revived. I was now in my fifth life, but I couldn't forget that smile, I couldn't get it out of my mind, and after I'd been discharged from the hospital, I announced to the newspapers, I will allow myself to be tied up in a sack, weighted down and dropped into the river for six hours. I am willing to take all bets that it will not kill me. My fifth life left me in the form of tiny bubbles that rose upward to the surface as I lay in the mud of the riverbed tied in a burlap sack. Before my river spectacle, Doc had taken care of my revivals, my returnings. When they hauled me up and examined me, He's dead. Set him to the morgue. Doc wasn't around to take my corpse away. Luckily, I came too, in my sixth life. Just before they drained the blood from my body. Hey! What the- Ulrich the Undying grinned as he lay among the satin folds in the coffin, ten feet under the ground. That's why Doc smiled just as I, just as he died. He thought they'd embalm me and I'd be finished, unable to return. Well, I was lucky, and the next time, I made arrangements. I hired an attendant. As soon as I am declared dead, bring my body back here and put it in bed. I'll come around after a while. Understand, Saxton? Yes, Mr. Ulrich. Then I constructed a replica of the electric chair and I allowed them to shoot the same amount of voltage through my body that all convicted killers get. Ready, Ulrich. My sixth life slipped away, with newsreel cameras grinding and television cameras scanning the spectacle as they electrocuted me.
and I revived in my seventh life, $90,000 richer. Here's your money, Yurik. Your newsreel and TV rights and admissions and your side bets. Thank you. And as I sat on the bed counting my latest bankroll, the attendant I hired came with a knife in his hand. Give me that money, Mr. Yurik. Don't be a fool, Saxton. But I was a fool. I struggled with him. That was a mistake. I wasted my seventh life. Saxon brought the knife down into my hand. Ulrich the Undying gulped at the last traces of oxygen in the buried coffin. So, this is the last time I can die and expect to return. This is my eighth life, and when I revive, I will be in my ninth life, my last life, the final and eternal death at its end. But, but I'm rich now, thanks to the poor cat, that poor cat lying dead on the table next to me. Oryx sighed, his head reeling. That poor cat that died so that I could have its nine. Nine. Oh my lord! Oryx the Undying screamed. That cat! It died once! I only got eight lives from it! Only eight! No, no! Let me out of here! At the last traces of oxygen vanished from the coffin buried so deep. That. That's why the. Doc left! Up above, the loudspeaker droned on. He's been down there for over an hour, folks. His oxygen is gone by now. He in. Did you hear something? A faint scream? Huh? Oh, it must have been a cat, you heard, Phil. <laughs> and that's my yup yarn fiends. Ulrich counted his nine lives very carefully. Trouble was, he only had eight to play with. Poor pussy used up one. When they dug up Ulrich at the end of the three hours, he was dead, all right. For good, too. <laughs> now, I'll turn you back to the old witch for more meows. And listen, here's a tip. Make like you're reading her column. If you don't, <laughs> you may Angora. Bye.